Well, friendly hellos. Welcome to the first allocator call taking place on 14 May. Let's take a look at the agenda for us. We're going to start off this call with lots of updates focused around the program and existing allocators. So what this will mean is if you're an allocator and you've already received your data cap, we'll talk a lot about how we're verifying your retrievals with some of the tooling, make sure that you're aware of that, and then check in on some other tooling that you may be using and just kind of communicate the best way that you can articulate that for the community. Then we'll talk about the rolling applications. So if for any reason you have an issue with this initial and you'll need to reapply and repivot, We'll talk about how the scoring will work, how the application process should be a lot easier. And we'll spend a lot of time going over the existing diligence that was done. So if you're an allocator and you've already allocated some of your initial five PIBs, you may have noticed in the allocator registry, there was an issue that was stood up with, hey, here's some of the issues that we've seen with your initial data cap distributions. Let's kind of talk about it and we'll take some time to go through there and answer any questions and next steps. We'll also have time for a spotlight and then going over the applications. We had a new question come in on chat about how to update organizational contact information, so we'll address that in the FAQ. As always, there should be lots of time at the end of this call, so if there's anything that you want to talk about specifically, as always, raise a hand, unmute, or at the end of the call, we'd be happy to go through anything that you want to see in your initial review and go forward. So as a reminder, today is May 14th. The next call will be taking place on 28 May. All right, first up, just a quick check-in. So we're working on a blog with the foundation that kind of talks about the allocator program right now. We've reached out to a couple different allocators to say, hey, we see that you're either allocating or you're working on tooling. Would you like to be featured in this blog? I'd like to make this a public. So in addition to somebody that we've reached out to, we're also keen if you're an organization that's serving as an allocator and you'd like to be highlighted, please reach out to me. What we're looking for is like, hey, who's your organization? What MVP have you been working on or what work in progress? Do you have a demo for an automated tooling that you're in progress for? Do you have a really great bookkeeping diligence plan set up that you think others would benefit from knowing? And this is a great way to build awareness about your program, your organization, and just kind of get the word out with the backing of the foundation. So if you'd like to be featured, it's just a couple of questions and any link to work you may be doing, feel free to DM me or you might get a DM from me specifically asking if you're keen. So open invite for any allocators that would like to be featured in that upcoming blog. Let's check in on the numbers. So this is pulled from the Pulse page, it's linked here in the bottom if you haven't seen it. So since we've kicked off the allocator program about two months ago, we've seen 72 PIBs that's been distributed. So out of that 72 PIBs, that's accounting for around maybe 18% of the total data cap that was initially distributed of the 400 that went out. And you can see the 72 PIBs here. So what we've been doing is looking at the allocators that distributed that and kind of taking a look. We've had 11, excuse me, 11 automated allocators, one active allocators. And this is kind of the backing that we use to see like how much data cap is going out. Where is that data cap going out to? And it's just a really easy way to kind of have a top down. So if you haven't had a chance to check out this page, it's great, it's beautiful. And you could find the link down here at the bottom. If you have any questions, feel free to give a shout. Now. Let's talk about what's coming up with the allocator refresh. If you take a look at this screenshot here, what you're looking at is a list of the allocators with their used allocation that's gone out. So we have around 11 allocators so far that have crossed that 75% threshold of their initial distribution of data cap. So if you find yourself in this same boat, one of two things is gonna happen. Either you can raise an issue in the allocator registry, a governance team, we've distributed our data cap and we'd like to be reviewed, or you can stand by and either a member of Fiddle or the governance team will kind of collect the information that we've seen on that initial data cap and then kind of come back to you with questions. And that's what we'll talk a lot about on the call is what does that diligence review look like and what are some ways that you can kind of open up. But I really want to foot stomp and make sure that this is landing for you is two things. In that audit, what we're looking for is in your application, you'll spell out your weekly allocation schedule, your retrievability, your KYC process. In this audit, before you receive the new data cap, what we're looking at is, did you adhere to that? Or was data cap just distributed without any retrievability, no KYC, no process? And if it is, 
there will not be a refresh on that data cap. You'll have to reapply and then redefine your parameters in order to kind of build back that trust that we're looking for. So as a key point, as we start looking at this, be very mindful that as we go through this new allocator process, since everybody has their own data cap, what we're looking for is that accountability of that data cap as it goes through. I'll kind of pause to see if anybody has questions or Galen, KZ, Will, if there's any additional points that you want to make as we start to cover this in more detail. So let's talk about it. So I mentioned that there's a page called Spark and KZ posted this in the Allocator channel a couple of days ago. What Spark will able allow us to do is to see the successful retrieval rating for each minor ID. So what we're doing is we're pulling from Spark and using this as like the source of truth for retrievability. So if in your application, you state a certain percentage of your data will be retrievable, this is the way that it's verified. And you can see the link right here at the bottom of the slides and the slides are in Slack as well. So essentially the source of truth for retrievability is set up to be Spark. Now we realize that there's some allocators that might have a different methodology that they've been using. That's great. We'll talk about this on the call and kind of show some examples. But we just wanted to kind of stress when we start to look at the data cap as far as like an audit and what's going on, we're using Spark to kind of measure that retrievability. And if you're an allocator and you're seeking for a data cap refresh and none of your deals are retrievable or none of your deals are meeting the benchmarks, it's important for you to know where that data is coming from. And again, if you have a different methodology for tracking that, that's what should be listed in your application. And that's what should be listed when we have these reviews. And we'll talk about some examples of notaries, excuse me, allocators that have done that in the past. Galen, I see your hand went up, please, floor is yours. Yeah, I was just gonna uh, add some weight to that. Can you go back a slide on Spark? Great. Um, also, it looks like the window frame is resized a little bit and it's like clipping the screen yeah, share. Computer lock, let's just refresh that screen share and that should be good. Um, Cool. While you're getting that, so yes, reiterating, there are different ways, there are different standards, uh, there are different methods that people are using to both check retrieval, um, retrieval testing and retrieval sampling. Right now, we, we, the governance team, we fiddle, we, the ecosystem cannot support every, you know, different standard. This was a conversation last year as we were standing up the retrieval bot. Um, to get a standard for now that works uh, for most of the people um, and is able to scale. So right now, that standard that we're going to be using is coming from that Spark team. So we're seeing decent retrieval metrics on a handful of SPs, but a lot of SPs are not uh, showing retrievability according to Spark. That's what we're going to use. If your application to be an allocator said that you would have retrievability, that you would be supporting data that is retrievable to prove that it is something that a client wants on the network, this is the mechanism we're going to use to check that. If you have a totally different mechanism that you think works really well, you're going to need to propose what that mechanism is. And it's probably going to need some work of standing up a bot standing up a dashboard, um, something that can be audited and verified. Simply posting, you know, a screen grab from a terminal with one, you know, uh, piece ID showing that that one piece is retrievable. That is not going to be sufficient to show that all the deals made by this client to this SP that that SP is hitting retrievability standards. So just showing a screenshot of some other, you know, mechanism that you're using is probably not going to be sufficient to show compliance at scale. So that's why we encourage you to either work directly with this Spark team um, or see how they're building it. And you will need to build a robust dashboard um, that can be like I said, audited and verified at scale. 
a single a single piece ID, a single payload does not prove that that SP is retrievable um, at the at the compliance standard that we're expecting. Just wanted to reiterate that. And I think Will is on here as well. I don't know. Um, pause for a second and see if Will has anything to add or anything to clarify, contradict. Yeah, no, I think that sounds right and is uh, in line with what I've heard, which is that, um, you know, I think this, there, there there's maybe uh, the, the nuance here, right, is this is um, a, a compliance mechanism that is what we're interpreting or understanding the expectation to be around open public data sets. So there's a bunch of this data set where the, the value to the network and the thing that the sort of compliance check um, as stated is that that data is available for anyone to get access to. And so the, um, the set of things then that help us validate that is that random users can attempt and successfully get it. Um, and so that's, you know, if that's the the claim of why this is valuable for the network, then something of that nature is, I think, the the sort of thing that helps validate that that's true. Uh, and so that's what Spark, as a successor to uh, Retrieval Bot um, before, is attempting to validate: is can a random user actually get access to this data? Uh, and so that's why just a you know screenshots or you as an individual allocator getting access, um, you know that's a, a useful prerequisite and lets you know it's the right data that's there. Um, but that doesn't mean that, that end users can get it. So that, that's the sort of solution we're looking for in this space uh, for, for this category of data. Thanks. Yes, awesome. Okay, right. Did your, uh, did your Okta just force you to re- <laughs> Because it did mine too, and I'm wondering if that's why the slides. Oh just... <laughs> man! In a world of security, what that? That's great. I appreciate that, guys. So, I guess what does this mean for you as an allocator? I think what I would start off with is there has been 11 comments that were made in the allocator registry. If you're an allocator on this call or you're watching, probably step one is come check out those comments left. What they'll do is they'll kind of spell out in detail, and we'll take a look at a couple of examples, is what were the metrics on retrievability? What was like the record in your bookkeeping? What does this initial five pivs say about your organization so far? And of course, this is your chance to be like, hey, you're missing something, or this is what actually happened, or I had no idea what was coming on. But leaving those comments in the issue is going to start to build that dialogue. Because what we'll be looking at is pulling that dialogue and then looking at like, how do we refresh this data cap grant for you? So once you've taken a look at your application, please leave comments, leave discussion, and we'll talk about each one of these. And on the call, we'll have lots of time, either on this call or the next call, if you'd like to go through in detail and say like, what, what am I doing wrong? What is I missing? We'll have lots of support, lots of questions as we go through it. So let's take a look. What I have in this screenshot right now was posted here for just a sample application. And what they'll do is they'll break it into a couple different points. And the best thing for you is to look at each point and be like, hey, is this missing some information that I might not have provided? Or is I doing something wrong as I'm allocating this data cap? So if you look in this screenshot here, it spells out like the allocation schedule or the list of node usage or the KYC, KYB. As a reminder, any data cap that's going out requested by a client should have some type of an audit. Who's the client? What are they doing with the data? How do you verify that it will meet the requirements of the program? And then you issue that data cap. So if any of those KYC steps are missing or they can't be found, we'll spell it out in this GitHub application and maybe a repo is changed or maybe something happened on the back end. This is a great opportunity for you to come through and kind of leave that comment. So if you haven't done so already, please do so. And I posted in the Slack if you want to take a look at where the link is and the allocators that are ready to have that review done. And as Will and Galen mentioned earlier, when we start to look at some of these metrics for retrievability and we start to look at some of these KYC, there needs to be kind of a standard. And as Galen kind of highlighted, the standard for retrievability is Spark. The standard for KYC should be some type of audit that can be done in your bookkeeping repo. Whether you do it offline, it's published there. If you do have metrics that you want to share, like this screenshot, 
this would be great, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and ask some more follow-up questions. Like we can see these really small samples, but with five petabytes going out, is this really indicative of that data set or just one small clipping as it goes through? So be very diligent in your kind of response or your way of looking at the data cap that's going out is if it's not verifiable in Spark, which is gonna be like kind of the standard that we're using, and you are putting this, the onus is gonna be on you for verifying that that data is retrievable. So I'll kind of pause here to see if Galen or Will or Casey or Marta or anybody on the call would like to dig into these in a little bit more detail or ask any kind of follow-up questions. All right. Well, I think all of the allocators that have had a diligence review done, I'll reach out to you in a DM just to make sure that you're tracking it, just to see if you have any questions. I will say that the best way to kind of communicate that won't be in the DM. That will just be the friendly ping to make sure that you see the GitHub. It will be actually in the GitHub issue. That way, everybody can kind of leave a comment and get you support or address anything that goes on. So with that, I'd like to kind of change gears and turn the floor over to Galen because we have some updates coming for requests for allocators, some updates to the scoring and some processes for rolling applications. So Galen, can I turn the floor over to you for the next step on the intake? Yes, awesome. Um, so <clears throat> we've been, we mentioned this in the previous um, governance call. Uh, we have put together some requests for allocators. We're looking for a couple specific types of allocators. We brainstormed some different specific ideas. Um, as we move to rolling applications, uh, hoping those applications are going to open this week. Um, you have been here before. You've seen how there's a GitHub issue. There's an Airtable form. You open your issue. That becomes a source of truth. What we want to do, um, GitHub has now released uh, better issue templates. They're still in beta, so I really hope they don't deprecate that beta, um, but uh, we're using these for our client applications and they work really well. So the plan for this go around is we're, we're going to stand up um, a issue form in the GitHub repo. If you want to be an allocator, if you already are an allocator and you want to apply for another pathway, uh, if you see one of these RFAs and you want to build that, um, if you have a auto verifier, similar to something like OAuth with GitHub, um, single sign-on option. You know, we're looking for more of those types of manual allocators. So we're going to be standing up that GitHub issue template. There will still be an Airtable form, um, but this will be mostly just the sanctions check. Um, so it'll be some information about name, country of origin, and that information will stay private. That is the same as we have been doing it um, for three years. So it will be another form for people to fill out. Um, that information will be held private. We'll need one of those uh, disclosures forms submitted for each uh, pathway. So even if you are an allocator right now, we're just going to have you submit another form. That way we can link and we can make sure the GitHub issue is created the uh, form submission is made. We're still cleaning all of these up so that they connect to the rubric. There's going to be an updated rubric. So it's going to be three things, just like previous elections, GitHub issue, Airtable form, and a rubric. Um, those are not done yet. They're still being drafted internally. We'll post those. Um, they should go live this week. People can then start applying um, especially applying to tackle some of the requests for allocators that have been published. Uh, and the hope is that we can trial a faster turnaround time, um, especially for people that are applying to those uh, allocators we've already kind of vetted as ideas. But if you raise your hand and say, there's a request for allocator using GitHub OAuth, I would like to build that. Here's how I'm going to do it. And then you go off and you build something else. You didn't meet the request for allocator. Um, and so that is, again, not going to be in compliance. So similarly, 
what you put on your application form, that is the expectation of what you're going to be building. That is how you are going to perform diligence on clients to make sure that you are working with real clients, with real data, doing real distributed deal making. Um, if you are coming to apply as a manual allocator, that is still going to be an option, but there's going to be, um, we're going to try and have priority and uh, more efficient tooling setup and scoring setup for the ones that are doing automated market-based or uh, things that are on our request for allocator list. So stay tuned, GitHub issue, we'll post it in the various like Slack channels. Um, it'll be in the um, allocator governance repo. It'll also have a link to the Airtable form, so you'll see it. Um, and there will be a link to a new updated rubric uh, so that we can move to these rolling applications. Um, Eric has a hand. Yeah, thanks. Uh, sorry, my question is about the the, the Spark uh, retrieval uh, mechanism. So could you please turn back for, for the last page? Uh, my question is the how is the spark work and what is the means the what does it mean means the spark retrieval success or unsuccess? What is the mechanism for 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 the spark working? Will, do you want to jump in on that? Sure. Spark will start with the deal. It will go to IPNI to find the SIDs in that deal. It will randomly select SIDs that are within the data that has been indexed uh, for that deal. And then it will attempt to download over HTTP or GraphSync um, by random end users of Filecoin Station um, and will report the aggregate success rate of that. So th that is the previous uh, retrieval bot, right? No. Previously, retrieval bot downloaded the root CID uh, of data from a single Amazon AWS IP address that was set up by data programs. Mm-hmm. We uh, had at least some SPs who whitelisted and only provided retrieval to that IP address. Okay. So that means the SP should provide their IP address uh, to ensure, to make sure they are in the no, whitelist. That, that means that, that, means that SPs need to, that means SPs need to provide the retrieval to all IP addresses, not only the single one in AWS. Ah, okay. That means open the order parts for the Spark. Uh, I mean, it's only port 443, but they do need to open the, uh, they need to remove any IP whitelists. Ah, uh, for port 443. Okay. Okay. And, and, and what, what does the dashboard, the, the, the governor means? Because I opened that, that link, I saw some metrics here uh, that says minor performance. That's, uh, we have a ranking, the minor actor ID and a successful retrieval. So that means the successful retrieval ratio, right? The higher uh, ratio, uh, the score you got, that means the 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 the, the item or CID you, you can check it by the Spark, right? That's correct. So of the different retrieval attempts that were made to that minor actor, that's what percentage of them were successfully downloaded by by various Filecoin Station end users. So it, it is a metric of how often content that was claimed to be available on that provider uh, was actually able to be downloaded. Understood. So uh, can I say uh, right now, uh, I saw the, the, the dashboard is the 1.73. That's the retrieval success rate. So can I tell the SPs, I mean, for my cooperators say your, your retrieval ratio must be higher or equal to these metrics will be okay. Can I see that? Uh, no, not necessarily. That 1.73, that's the retrieval success rate across all of the SPs that Spark is pinging. I believe that's what that number means, is 1% of all of the SPs have retrievability. Okay. And so it would not be safe to say, oh, if your, if your SP is hitting one per greater than 1%, you're okay. No. Well, the successful retrievals, when we look at a SP ID or a minor actor ID, we are looking at that miner's retrieval rate. And so that's where we want to see the numbers that are above 85% to show that it is greater than 85% that SP ID is retrievable. 
Okay, that means the, the, the green one. The green one is okay, right? Because I yes. I, I saw someone with like a 66.5 something that, that, that was colored in red. That means dangerous, right? <laughs> yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And quick Great. clarifying question for Will. Station and Spark. Help me understand. I can't remember exactly. Station is the desktop app that people are using, and yeah, Spark. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we know. I, I run. Well, I, uh, station. I, I'm asking for me. I'm asking for me. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So Station is the desktop app, and then Spark is the protocol that it runs to do this measurement. I think um, the one one note or caveat is that this overall ranking for an SP is across all of the validated data um, that Spark has checked for that SP. So you may be able to um, get a finer grain thing and we will um, be working with Spark to get that more finer grain data where you can say, you know, the data uh, associated with the allocations from this allocator or from this client, you know, what is the retrievability we've seen on that versus the SP as a whole? Because different data right. that's uploaded is expected to have different retrievability characteristics. Right. Yes, that makes sense. And I just wanted to understand for directing people, the team that's making the Spark protocol is the same team that's, that is making Station. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's, okay. that's right. That's the Station. Um, mm. uh, and and yeah, if you if you um there, there's a there's a station channel in Filecoin Slack and also a station module builders working group and either of those will get to the right people for conversations about the Spark protocol. Okay, that's great. So how about the slide uh, number ten? That means the next slide. So uh, uh, I'm not sure about the screenshot. So what does it mean? Like a boost retrieval with some uh, minor IDs. They're receiving the cars, what is the success? What what does it mean for the unsuccess? Something like that. The totally the download of uh, 55 megabytes, the data, the car fail. Right. So this is this is an example. This is a allocator saying, here is my evidence that all of my clients' deals are retrievable. This is us saying uh, this is not, this is kind of Pick in, picking and choosing certain data uh, that does not show that it is retrievable at scale. And this is showing, this, this does not mean that all of that data would be retrievable by anyone on the network. So if you are an allocator or a client and you say this is public open data that someone wants on the network and should be retrievable by anyone, it is not sufficient, in my opinion, to just go pull a handful of pieces and show a screenshot. Um, so that's why we're pushing for a standard that will scale uh, rather than me looking at this because, you know, if I go try these and boost, am I going to get the same results? Should I just take this one person's word that they're retrievable? Um, mm -hmm. Can anyone else like vet that this works? What about other you know, pieces, what about other car files from those clients? So in my opinion, this is not sufficient retrievability. So that's why we're showing this as an example. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Good questions. Um, uh, so yes, if we could go back to go back to here. Yeah. Um, Allocator rolling applications coming. We've seen the request for allocators. We want to see more market-based and automated um, allocators doing fast, programmatic, automated diligence. Um, and we want to have that application on GitHub, get the disclosures in Airtable, and check the new rubric. So clicking forward one slide, please, K-Red. Um, we're going to be trying to simplify the rubric. We've used uh, a big rubric in the past that has a lot of qualitative sections. We score every question on that rubric. Um, it takes a long time. We have multiple people score them. Writing those rubrics is involved. Uh, we're going to trial 
a more simplified scoring rubric, especially for the ones doing um, allocators or teams saying they want to do something from the RFA list. So if someone says, I will absolutely build a auto allocator, here's where I'll host it, here's how it will perform diligence, here's the website. Um, we want to streamline those approvals. Uh, so there will still be an amount of, of information that gets captured. We're still gonna score them. If five people stand up and say, we all wanna build a GitHub OAuth allocator, that's great. We'll probably approve all five, but those five teams might design it in different ways. They might offer different services. And so we want to be able to still see those questions and score those against a rubric um, to have an understanding of what's working, what teams are successful. Um, so stay tuned, there will be a rubric. Um, it just is probably going to look different than it has in the past. Okay, uh, I don't see any um, hands or chat questions on the rubric and the move to rolling applications. Um, so we're excited to unblock. We know there's a couple teams already in the ecosystem that want to apply. Um, excited to see those. Okay, Ray, back to you. Oh, yeah, exciting stuff. Thanks, Galen. Everyone, I think the last point to just kind of put on radar is I like to bubble up any of the FAQs that come through so that everybody can benefit it. And one of the questions was, hey, we'd like to bring on someone new to represent our organization. Great, love to have them. The best way to do that is if you check the allocator registry, you can make an issue. And in the issue, just say, hey, this is our application number, number 996, and we'd like to add this individual to the GitHub and to the Slack channel, and then just publish what their GitHub and Slack channel name is. All we ask is that if you are making that issue, the GitHub name that's making the issue should be the one on the JSON file. If for whatever reason that individual is no longer with your organization, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated, but we'll just verify through a KYC to make sure you're not being taken over. But the steps are relatively simple. And as a reminder, your organization can have more than one individual that can speak on behalf to approve on your behalf. As long as we just have them added to your JSON file, it's not a problem at all. So again, if you have any changes in your organization, the best way to do it is just to come to the allocator registry and then just leave a comment. Hey, I'd like to add Galen to be a member of the foundation. Here's his GitHub, here's his Slack. And if I make that with mine, it's already linked. Someone will come through and add it. If you have any blocks, any questions, I'm always happy and help it get you all set up. So with that, we'll turn the call over to anybody that has anything on their mind, whether it's looking at their diligence review, asking any questions, anything coming up, the floor is yours. Hello, this being uh, I got one question. Hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I remember from the very beginning on the first first page, uh, you showing some kind of uh, a slides there. The the fewer the nearly more than ten nodes. Uh, we are we are Hui Neng Network IP FSTT. Uh, if I uh recall correctly, you mentioned that for the uh for for the for the team uh, on the list, we must. Uh, submit an issue in the allocator reg registry and do some audit for data cap. Is, is, is that correct? If I'm understanding your question correctly, it's that if you would like to receive more data cap, yeah. Oh, uh, yes, if, yes, sure. So step one is come into the allocator governance. It's the repo there. And you'll see that your organization will have this review that was put together. Step number one is take a look at that for your organization and address any of the topics that may be. So if one of the questions may be, we can't see a bookkeeping repo with any kind of KYC, you might say, well, hey, the, the link that I had was wrong. Please check this one. So if you're looking for the data cap refresh, please come to this allocator governance issues and then find your organization and just address any of the comments that were left so that we can kind of get a sense as we do this audit. Uh, so, uh, but previously we also uh, made some e explanation on the GitHub. Is, is that enough or it's not enough? 
it'll be two parts. So once you leave a comment, what we're looking to do is address any problems may, we may have. So like I said, we might not have the right bookkeeping repo or there was no retrievability. What we're looking for is if that's the case, you should have a very clear plan to address it going forward. So for example, if none of the data is retrievable, it's gonna be very difficult to allocate you more data cap if you haven't been able to make it retrievable in the first place. So addressing why those issues are is the great first step. And I'll be happy to pull up your application if you wanna take a look at it with members of the team, or we could schedule some follow-up, whatever we could do to help you. Okay, uh, so uh, I just make a, a, a self-introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm Bing Zhou, I'm partner of Huineng IPFSTT. So I'm in Dubai during this period. If you guys uh, just uh, happen in Dubai, uh, Dubai, maybe sometime we can meet and talk and uh, I will follow your instructions. Thank you. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. And I see that you had left the comments already. So thank you. Again, thank what you. we're looking for is how much you could spell out to make that more retrievable for the community. Great question. Thanks for that. Looking okay. forward to more updates from you guys. Okay, thank you. I think we're reaching that natural conclusion. Thank you so much for your time. I'll make one last call for alibis. The next call will be happening at 2100. We should have a full crowd since there's no holiday for everybody. And again, if there's any questions you have, please shoot a question in the allocator channel for the fastest reply. And then if you're one of the allocators that's currently up for renewal and looking at this audit, please take a look at that governance and leave a comment. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks everyone. Hello, I got uh, our technical team got one more questions. So the question is, let me find. Uh, the question is our, our SP that supports retrieval, but it doesn't see a search request on Spark. Hello, Kevin. Yeah, I don't yeah, think so I understand. think there's two things. One of those is that probably it is the Spark team that you'll want to engage with on that. But one reason I do know why you may not see direct retrieval attempts from Spark is if you are not publishing the CIDs to uh, the network indexers. So you can check on uh, IPNI, on SID.contact, on the other network indexers um, for uh, CIDs in the deals that um, have been made as verified deals to confirm that they are being advertised and listed from the SP. If they aren't in the database that is understood by the whole network, then Spark won't know to go and try and retrieve them. Okay, thank you. Great question. All right, everyone. Wishing you a wonderful night, great day, and a lot more updates to come. Cheers, everyone. All right. Well, friendly hellos, everybody. Welcome to the second allocator governance call taking place on May 14th. High level on the agenda. What this call is focused on is the data cap renewal. So those of you that have allocated your five pibs, taking a look at like, what is the process that the governance team is looking at for meeting the requirements in your application to carry forward with new data and making you aware of what that retrieval and everything looks like. And then circling back on what does rolling applications look like coming? So if for whatever reason, another allocator wants to apply to the program, how does that look? How does that work and what that process will be? And then just focusing on some key things like frequently asked questions that have come up in the meantime. And as always, lots of time on this call if there's anything you want to dive into or specific to your application. So this is the second and last call taking place May 14th. Next call will take place May 28th, May 29th. All right, first item is working on a blog to kind of highlight what's going on in Phil Plus world. We'd like to highlight a couple of allocators to show what they're working on, what they've been doing. So this is an open call. If you want to be featured in a widely distributed Filecoin Foundation blog that's going out to socials and a lot of the distros, please reach out to me in Slack. What we'd be looking for is just who's your organization? What are you working on? 
Do you have an MVP or work in progress? Any success stories? Any lessons learned? And we'll put it in the blog. So if you'd like to be featured, if you'd like to have some free publicity, please just send me a note on Slack. Love to just reach out and put a comment or two in the blog for you. All right, let's take a look for any allocators that are in the program. What you're looking at right now is one of the metrics dashboard that we use to track the amount of data cap that's outstanding, how many has been allocated and where it's going. So if you take a look at this board that we have right now, we have about 72 PIBs that have been allocated since the allocators received their data cap back in early March. And of those, we've had 82 approved allocators and 28 active. So that means there's still around, you know, 50 or 60 allocators that are still getting everything set up. We'll talk about that as we go on on the call. Then what we're looking at is two of those active ones. We have 23 that are active on the manual. And so of those 23, it looks like there's about nine, nine of you that have researched or distributed your initial data cap and are ready to start taking a look at how does that refresh process work. So on this list here, Greater Heat, Be Well, Top Value, ND Labs, Origin, Top Pool, Decentralized, Refill, EF. These are the allocators that have been manual, have received initial five PIBs of data cap, distributed that, and are now ready for like an audit, a review, and going forward. So one of the things to stress is in the allocator program, every allocator receives a set amount of data cap. This makes it a little bit more easy to look at how those allocators are actually distributing that data cap as they go out. So it's really important to highlight that that data cap has to be distributed in the guidelines that you put forward in your applications to become an allocator. So keeping with KYC, diligence checks, retrievability, if those aren't met, we can't verify those things. We won't be able to issue more data cap. So with that, we have a couple of tools that we're looking at. I want to make you aware of them and then show you how these are playing into the, the review process that goes forward. First one's called Spark. If you've been around the community for a while, this will be nothing new. The Spark dashboard runs on Grafana. And the link's right here in the slide deck. What this is used for is retrievability. So a certain number of your applications, when those clients go through, have to have retrievable data. If it doesn't have retrievable data and we can't meet those benchmarks, we'll spell that out in the review that's sped up. So I wanted to first show you this where we're pulling those retrievability metrics because this is the stake proof, which means that if any kind of retrievability questions are coming back, this is what the governance team is using for that review. Now, if you have some other methodology in place, you'll have to spell out specifically what that is and how that can be verified with either a CID check whatever methodology, because that data should be spelled out in your applications. And what we're looking at is this Spark platform that you see here. Now, what we did is we went through all of the allocators that distributed their data over the last few weeks, and we made an issue in the allocator governance repo. So when you follow this repo here, you can see each number of the allocators right here, and then a comment that was left with a little bit of information. I'll just pick this top one here at random. And what this will say is like, essentially, what was your allocation schedule that you built out in your application? And then what did you actually distribute? Second is, did you have any kind of KYC or KYB? To check this, we're looking at the bookkeeping repos that were set up. So if we overlook something or you have a different bookkeeping repo where that was taking place, that would be a great comment to leave. So, hey, whatever you're looking at, this is the link to my bookkeeping repo. We also look at like who were the storage providers and the storage check, how much of the data was sealed, and then how it came through. So if you were an allocator and you've used your data cap and gone through, you'll see that one of these has been open for each one of you. Just take a look. This is the best chance for you to come through here and say, hey, you have no sign of KYB, but actually my link was here. So the more information that you leave in a comment, that helps us to kind of circle back. This will be the review taking place to take place before we issue more data cap that goes forward on that. I'll pause. Fatman, I see your question. Who's the three ED and fourth one? I don't think I follow what that question is. If you want to rephrase it or unmute, I'll be happy to dive in that for you, bud. The big highlights on this call, to come back to it again, is if you are looking for a data cap refresh, what the governance team has been doing is looking at all of the applications that you have approved and signed off on and seeing if that complied with what you said you would do in your application. 
So essentially, if you said you would have a set weekly allocation schedule and you didn't, if you said that you would have a public bookkeeping repo of like KYC and KYB and we can't find it, if you said you'd have a certain degree of retrievability and we don't see it, we've spelled that out in each one of these issues. So please go to this governance issues, take a look at your application and leave us a comment if we're missing any information that may be there. Like, hey, we do not see any of the information on your KYC. Maybe we just have the wrong repo. So the big call to action for any allocator here, ND Cloud, Greater Heat, EF, RF Phil, be well, IPFS, ST, Origin, everybody who's essentially been allocating their data cap, this will just be the required step that we do just to make sure that the program is healthy and functioning to get you off on the right foot. So again, please take a look at this repo, leave any comments if we're missing it, because what we'll be doing is taking all that information. And just in case I was muted when this came up, essentially what we do is we're looking at like what kind of comments that you come back. So if you are saying, yes, my data is retrievable, please provide examples. And those examples should cover the full stake of your data. So what I mentioned earlier on the call is that we're using Spark as a source of truth for like, how do we look at the CID check? How do we make sure that there's retrievability in it? If you're saying that you're using a different process that's not linked up to the CID verification or not retrievability, please spell it out for the whole data set. So in this example, it's great. We can see some instances, but we can't see where that five petabytes go. So let us know if like something's not linked up to that CID or there's some kind of a technical thing, please spell it out in detail in your application. That way we get it. And then what we'll be doing is having an intake form to make it easier for either allocators to reapply if they want to retool an application because it didn't qualify for new data or to try to bring on new individual allocators to the system. And the goal is that it's much simpler process. So essentially in the last round, a lot of this text was collected with like long paragraphs, long answers. We're trying to get it down to be much more tactical. So it just takes a few minutes listing out exactly what you're gonna do. And then that way it's a lot easier to bring on either new allocators or if for any reason you're not qualifying for a refresh and you wanna reach them and come back, that's where that scoring rubric would come in. So I'll pause and see if anybody has any questions or wants to look at any applications in general. The floor is yours. Sweet. Mike, I see your question. Take a look at RF Bill. Love to, bud. Let's pull it up. All right. So Mike, it looks like this was broken into two parts. The first was one petabyte given to the client and the, in the application, it said that the schedule would only be 50 TIBs. And so let us know if that was like a bug or something that happened or why there was no like scrunch schedule that went out with that. The second is kind of the same point. You know, the data cap would be asking for 50 TIBs, but then the actual allocation was much higher. This is probably the big one that you should address. It's that we can't see. Yeah, good to go. Looks like you put the KYC in there and the KYB. And then we have no comment for allocator about the client SPs and where the data was actually stored. So if the SP was taking the deals to match the report, we're not seeing it. So we don't have the additional diligence that was coming through on that. So I'll kind of pause and see if you have any questions or you want to dive into any of these like specifics that we go forward. Interesting. Let me look into this. This is a good flag and this is exactly what the kind of things we were hoping for. I didn't know that the ST fill had impacted SPs and that sectors were actually terminated, but this is why we like getting the comments. Let me just give you a thumbs up, even though we're talking about this and eyes. I'm gonna be linking up with some of the team tomorrow and I'll see if we can explore these sectors and figure out what's going on. So thanks for putting that. I wasn't even tracking that ST fill had taken down storage providers with those. So. I will leave a comment and we'll get back to you on that. Good flag. Thanks for letting us know. All right. I'll make one last call if anybody else. Lynn, you guys are the same boat. Okay. If you haven't done so already, leave that comment. Let's just check. You probably already did. 
So Lynn, what you'll need to do is tell us what sectors and what was specifically impacted. So it gets really hard for us to verify the ST fill, especially on like five petabytes of data cap that goes out. So please spell out like, hey, what was impacted for you? Where have you seen this? Then that way we can get that rectified for you. So very much in the same way that's going back by how Mike did it, very much spell out what was impacted with that. So Fat Man, the question on Spark. No, Spark's not taking over for that. Spark is just the team that built the dashboard that allows us to see. So this is the Park Spark public dashboard. And so with this, we can see a lot of like the high level CID verification for each minor ID. And so what we do is we just use this as like a spot check to go through each one. But the CID checker tool is not being developed by Spark, just this dashboard. If they check all allocator applications by default, I I want to say with strong conviction that the answer is yes. There might be an edge case. So if you see something, let me know. But this should be checking all of them unless there's some specific issue with the CID on the back end. 